Wednesdays are most certainly the best day of the week, at least for myself, because re-zero days are best days. It's something that just, it makes you happy, it makes you terrified, it makes you feel a bunch of things, because you know when you watch ReZero, you might get an answer to a question you've had for many, many weeks, or they'll throw you 10 new questions, or they'll stab you in the heart because, hey, you like this character? Let's watch him suffer. Or, in this case, you get melted because of Otto and Subaru's friendship, and I'm like, what even is this show in Season 2 in general? The 26-ish minute runtime per episode is doing a lot for this series. Not only do you get time for a pretty cool after the credit scene where it's looking like, okay, you know, the gang's reforming here, we got Ram, we got Otto, we got our boy Subaru, and then you see Garf just kind of transform after being pissed off and is like, oh god, what is that going to look like? I mean, we already saw the sister go insane, so I can only imagine what he's going to look like in the future, but I'm pretty excited and terrified all wrapped up into one. The thing with this week's episode of ReZero is it definitely gets the adrenaline pumping and not in the fun way, where you're just terrified of the conversations between Beatrice and Subaru, and then of course you have Garf and Subaru, but honestly, out of everything that we've seen, all the insanity, which was memorable and we're going to dissect all of it, the best part of this episode, at least for myself, was honestly Otto's conversation towards the end of the episode. I think it's very easy to forget what a normal guy Subaru was before he came into this world, which is why I think that episode a few weeks back where you get the dream sequence where he gets to see his family was so important because it reminds you how normal he used to be. But this episode, I think, really highlights it. He laughs. He is just dumbfounded at what friend means for a little bit there. Because Otto is someone who I think, just similar to any character, you think they're a piece of a puzzle, a way to manipulate so you can get to the objective, which is basically not getting killed and the people that you care for will actually survive. The thing with this episode is I think the reaction of Super just being dumbfounded is pretty much every viewer unanimously just saying, what? What do you mean? Subaru has a friend, and it's easy to say, well, of course he has friends, look at Amelia, look at this and that, but it feels like everything is just so seesawed, it goes back and forth on, is it saved, is it good, can we trust it, we just don't know where to really put our eggs in what basket, because it feels like at any moment, you just reset, and if you stay too long like you do in the library, you could be in a new save point where people that you cared for are dead. But to have someone just say, the reason I came to save you is because you're my friend, and just, there's no malice there. There's nothing that is wrong with his dialogue. It's just us being, wait, a simple concept like friend. Something where no one has any ulterior motives, and I like how he kind of brings up, well, you know, it kind of does benefit me, but at the end of the day, Otto honestly has built a friendship with Subaru, and this really does highlight why you don't want to see Subaru die in this moment. You actually want to see him continue because what he just did, it really does establish a relationship that we thought probably wouldn't ever happen, but now we're like, holy shit, this is absolutely incredible. This is a series that really does know how to subvert expectations, and not in the way where it just feels convenient to be a shock factor, but rather, who would have thought one of the most memorable aspects of Season 2 would be Otto confessing his friendship to Subaru, and Subaru less so a laugh that he's had, he just needed that. You know, a good laugh can really de-stress you, and it transitions a man ready to kill himself to just ready to tackle his present. And if he dies, he'll die knowing that he has a friend waiting for him during his reset. It goes a hell of a long way and a simple moment like that really does show you just how normal he used to be and how the situation he's a part of was never what he was brought up to handle. But now he has to figure out how to do so with grace. And that is incredible development and honestly, Otto is best boy of this episode and one of the best characters in season two right now. I never thought I would ever say that, but goddamn, I hope Otto remains on the straight and noble path because if he stabs my boy in the back, goddamn, is that gonna hurt more than the Subaru getting brutally chopped up like he has over the past couple of episodes. The conversation with Beatrice and Subaru was, I didn't see any of it coming. I thought maybe I could understand where it might go, but then they just threw me a curveball with apparently everything Beatrice has done up until this point, which has basically been in accordance to the gospel and basically what she thinks her mother would want so she can see her mother. I don't know, is her mother one of the witches? Part of the witches' cult? Is it one of the people with the gospels? Oh man, Beetlejuice? Like, ah, I don't know. This is weird. This is unnerving that almost everything that we thought was a cute scene between Beatrice and Subaru most likely was accordance 
to a book that appears to be evil and you cannot trust him. And that has to hurt, which is, I think what makes this episode so amazing to me is you start off basically ruining what you thought was friendship. Beatrice and Subaru have always butted heads, but at the end of the day, you never really felt like there was a friendship. Maybe frenemies would be the best term to put them under because she would always be there for him, but there's been plenty of times where she's been basically on Subaru's side trying to protect him, and it felt like they were frenemies at the end of the day but now it seems like it was just so artificially contrived, but then you end the episode with a legit friendship, and it's just yin and yang. It's just such a contrast, and it's such a beautiful way to kick off the episode, break our heart, and then mend our hearts towards the end of the episode, which is one of Bree Zero's biggest strengths, is it doesn't just keep you, like, it doesn't feel like they just try to trip you and then kick you when you're down. They do that off and on, and sometimes there's episodes upon episodes of that, but season two has done a remarkable job at giving us hope and then throwing despair. And the despair is always worse than before, but then when you get moments like Otto confessing his friendship, even if Otto gets brutally killed next week, there's still, it makes you feel relieved before just completely wanting to break down and cry, which is one of Rizuru's biggest strengths that it has going for it, and the, the kind of brilliance of the return by death formula, that it's not edgy, but rather it's actually a really interesting plot device. I think just that entire conversation of just wanting to die and apparently she's not letting him. Like, I was watching this and I was like, what is with her face? She feels so scared and I'm not sure if there is legit feelings that she has for Subaru of some sort of friendship and or if it really is just convenience and how it's all from the gospel, but just Subaru wanting to die and pretty much every viewer probably cheering like, please slit your throat, do something because this is absolutely horrifying. This can't happen and you're worried that if he stays too long there will be a new checkpoint and if a checkpoint happens there, that's horrible. Like how do you continue after that? And just to see, I never thought I would say this, to see her walk in and stab Subaru. I've never been more relieved to see this woman in my life because I was like, Beatrice, sure, I mean it's kind of horrible because before Subaru came to this point, the, all the doors in the mansion were open, meaning most likely Beatrice was killed before Subaru got there, but Subaru opened the door last week, meaning he had the chance to enter the library. But goddamn, just to see the fear in her face and almost the relief slash pain in his, it's such night and day, and then it just leads into such an interesting way of not really repeating information while kind of doing a flash forward, like, okay, this is a conversation we've seen, we don't need to hear their dialogue, we're just going to speed by, almost like we're skipping by on a Blu-ray player, we're just fast forwarding. And then you get new information between Garf and Subaru and this other character who I always forget the name of. But it was quite interesting because I honestly thought he had it there. I didn't think he was going to get thrown in prison. I didn't think he was going to do anything all that wrong because, truth be told, he had great motives there. He had a solid personality. He wasn't being arrogant. He was kind of talking in ways that it wouldn't piss off Amelia. And he was bringing up conversations and ideas that honestly didn't make me think that he was going to get grabbed by the throat and thrown into a dungeon where... He couldn't do anything. They weren't even going to let him kill himself. And I'm glad that there is this, like, idea of the witch's scent and how it's not just, like, a couple of characters recognize it, but pretty much anyone in accordance to the witch's cult or just an understanding of this can basically smell that scent, and it makes him look like he's a cultist or a leader of the cult or something, and I'm really glad that they keep putting the focus on that, and that's why a lot of these characters do not have trust. Subaru is the type of character that if he doesn't put his foot in anyone's field and doesn't get in their way, they'll probably look away while kind of keeping his eye, but if he says the wrong thing while trying to insert himself and taking the focus away from people like Amelia, that's when he's going to get killed, if not just thrown into a dungeon where no one knows where he is. This episode did a lot in terms of establishing what Subaru should and shouldn't say, but also establishing why we want this save right here to work and to, for him to get to a new checkpoint, even though he spent three, almost four days in that dungeon. He still has some time to get back to the mansion, but there's something about that Otto friendship that I really hope remains because even though clearly Otto would still be friends with him even if he died and reset, there's something about just seeing that moment of just laughing. He couldn't do that again. That was a real raw visceral reaction and he couldn't have something like that again. Like maybe sure if he dies here, he could say, hey Otto, I want to be your friend and I'll be like, I was already your friend. What are you talking about, Subaru? Are you doing this? I don't know. There's just a lot to do with this, and I think just how vulnerable they made characters like Subaru just wishing that he could die and just couldn't at any moment, and then seeing the shocked and almost scared. She honestly felt like a little girl, Beatrice, in this episode, and it was so interesting to see someone who we thought we could trust, but not really trust, but feel like she's not going to stab us in the back, now feel like she's just reading a book in terms of what she can and cannot do, 
And then, of course, you just don't know what you should do about Garf. Like, does he have to die? Is it someone you talk your way out of? I don't know, like, they reveal some fun information about how the barrier works. Like, if you're, like, a legit half-blood, you'll stay within. But if you're someone like, of course, Frederica, then if you're not, like, if you have, like, a quarter of half-blood, then you'll be able to walk in and out. It's interesting how they're establishing the lore in the world a lot and just doing so with grace and not making you feel like just convenient info drops or rather natural dialogue that just brings everything full circle. Incredible episode once again, and honestly, Otto, best boy, best friendship right now in ReZero, and I can't wait to see where they're going to go from here. But of course, as always, let me know your thoughts and feelings down below, theories and speculations, and honestly, what did you think of this episode and just that friendship towards the end? If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like to share your support, and remember to hit that subscribe button if you happy new round here. Since the next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.